Hello and welcome back to a Total War Warhammer 1 Legendary Difficulty Guide. The Clan Angron campaign is probably the hardest campaign that I've played in Total War Warhammer, even harder than the Warriors of Chaos. What really makes this campaign difficult is the amount of backtracking you have to do in the early stages of the campaign, as well as only having access to one or maybe two armies until you retake Karak Eight Peaks. Additionally, unlike the Vanilla Dwarf factions, Clan Angrund faces a steep 50% increase in upkeep costs until Karak Eight Peaks is secured, which drastically weakens your economy and negates many of the typical dwarf strengths on the campaign map. So to start off, Clan Angrund is only accessible if you have the King and the Warlord DLC, and Clan Angrund is led by Balagar Ironhammer, a legendary lord that greatly boosts ranger units. Starting off the campaign with four unique lords is a great benefit early as you get access to two thanes to boost your army, a runesmith to boost your settlement growth, and a master engineer to boost your campaign movement range and your ranged units. Belagar's leadership enhances rangers significantly, granting them 12% more ammunition, 25% increased missile damage, and a 15% reduction in upkeep via the Red Skill Tree. Bugman's Ranger is an ideal choice for his army composition. The Bugman's Rangers end up being around the same as Longbeards in melee, while having the best missile strength outside of artillery and iron drakes. While you can't feasibly assemble a full Bugsman Ranger's army, Early on, you should aim to do so after reclaiming Karak 8 Peaks. To win the Clan Angron campaign, you do need to achieve several key objectives. First is reclaim Karak 8 Peaks. Ensure no active grudges in the Great Book of Grudges. Unite the Dwarf Holds through direct ownership, vassals, or military allies. Eliminate the Greenskins and Crooked Moon factions. Push Chaos factions back into the Chaos Wastes. While these objectives may not seem overly daunting on paper, the difficulty lies in the initial stages when your resources and armies are severely limited until you capture Karag 8 Peaks. This is a map of the early game of the campaign. As you can see, the beginning of the campaign looks like a mess, and it is. Our first target is the Broken Nose, so on turn 1 we need to recruit some Dwarf Warriors and start researching on our economy tree to get our public order under control. Because on Legendary Difficulty, the greatest difficulty increase is really going to be your public order and making sure that you keep your settlements from revolting. The next few turns, we take back settlements from the Broken Nose and wipe them out. And even on Legendary Difficulty, we are able to auto-resolve both settlement battles. As we are playing on Legendary Difficulty, I would recommend focusing on public order buildings so we don't have to stop our push into Greenskin territory and stop our revolt later on. For an army setup, decide between focusing on Dwarf Warriors or Basic Rangers. While I prefer Rangers, my recorded campaign utilizes Dwarf Warriors to test their effectiveness. Next up on the chopping block is the Skull Takers. They only have one army and are pretty easy to beat, especially if they besiege your capital. Crooked Moon and Crooked Moon Meet and Skits will send armies against you whenever they can, so it's a good idea to eliminate Garsnik as soon as you have consolidated your starting province and have dealt with the Skull Takers. This removes the greatest threat to your main province and gives you some more breathing room to focus on infrastructure. Even if you aren't friendly with Karak Norn, you should go straight to the Crooked Moon using the Underway to cut down on trespassing penalties. If Crook and Moon takes Karak Norn out, they become very strong and can spam armies that your single army will struggle to defend your province and still take theirs. After taking out Skarsnik, you can see if Karak Norn or Karak Hirn will confederate, but remember that the public order penalty for doing so is 8 for 5 turns. Next up on the chopping block is Black Venom as they are probably at war with Karak Hirn, and you might be able to get some gold out of them for joining the war. After taking out Black Venom, I would recommend setting the Room Smith to help with public order and growth, either in your main province or the Black Venom settlement to boost whichever needs to be built up more. 
The Greenskins are our next target, and although we aren't aiming to wipe them out, we should still take their capital and push them away from the Dwarves, and whatever remains of Karak Azul and Barak Var. Which gives us a fairly safe return to Karak 8 Peaks if we lose our army. Some guides will recommend not taking the settlements from the Greenskins, but it can act as a staging ground if you take heavy losses from the Crooked Moon Greenness gets. Speaking of which, now that the Greenskins are out of the north, we can finally attack Karak 8 Peaks. They normally have multiple armies, so Lightning Strike is very useful to have if you don't have a second army. Having a unit of artillery, which when you make the move towards the Karak, allows you to initiate the siege instantly, useful if you catch the Karak undefended. I recommend the Regiment of Renown Birch Thrower, so you don't have to waste any time recruiting or investing in any buildings. Once it's under your control, you can look into a second or possibly third army, and can turn your attention to the rest of the greenskins nearby, as you'll likely have a number of bridges to clear. From then on out, they play no differently from any other dwarves, and since you probably have very little territory north of Barak Bar, you don't need to worry too much about the chaos invasion right away. The Clan Angrim campaign in Total War Warhammer 1 is on legendary difficulty as a true test of strategic planning and resilience. To summarize, start by focusing on solidifying your initial territories and building a robust economic base. Prioritize eliminating immediate threats such as the Broken Nose and Skull Diggers and swiftly move to neutralize Skarsnik to secure your main province from additional threats. Utilize your unique heroes effectively, leveraging their abilities to enhance your army and settlements. As you push towards Karak 8 Peaks, maintain a balance between expansion and consolidation, ensuring your public growth, public order and growth are stable. Once Karak 8 Peaks is reclaimed, the campaign shifts gears. You'll be able to expand your military capabilities and turn your attention to unifying the dwarf holds and eradicating the remaining greenskin forces. The final phase involves managing the chaos threat and ensuring the safety and prosperity of your realm. By following this guide, you'll be well prepared to take on the myriad of challenges of the Clan Angrim campaign. Remember, patience and adaptability are key, overextending can be a major setback mid-game. With persistence and a keen strategic mind, you'll restore glory to Clan Angrim and secure long, a long victory in this legendary campaign. Good luck, and may your axes always be sharp and grudges be settled.